On behalf of the Provider Relations Team at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, we thank you for attending today's presentation, Direct Anterior Hip Arthroplasty, with Dr. Jacob Elkins, orthopedic surgeon in our orthopedics department. Our faculty's goal is to share information you can use about the latest therapies and techniques in medicine and answer your questions about how to partner with us in the care of your patients. If you'd like to learn more information or to talk with Dr. Elkins following this presentation, please reach out to your provider relations liaison or directly to him. These are informational presentations to enhance your clinical practices and to provide you the most updated information we have. No CME credit is provided at this time. This program is being recorded and will be posted to our educational resources for referring physicians webpage. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Elkins and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So again, I'm, I'm Jacob Elkins. I'm one of the adult reconstructive arthroplasty staff here at the University of Iowa. I've been here for just under two years and I'd like to share today one of the specialized hip procedures that we offer here at the University of Iowa. Nothing pertinent to this presentation to disclose. So as we all know, total hip arthroplasty is one of the most commonly performed muscular skeletal surgeries today. It is estimated by the end of 2030 that the United States will have over 1 million total hip arthroplasties performed per year. The goal of total hip arthroplasty is to replace the damaged cartilage surfaces of both the femur and the acetabulum in order to regain hip function as well as to markedly improve pain with daily activities. In doing so, total hip replacement is often considered to be the most successful surgery in the history of medicine. There are many indications for total hip arthroplasty. By far and away, the most common in this country is primary osteoarthritis or wear and tear of the hip joint. However, there are multiple other indications for total hip arthroplasty. It is important to note that these additional indications, although less common than primary osteoarthritis, tend to be those conditions which are more favorable to the direct anterior approach because of an improvement in stability, and we'll include more information on that soon. The traditional total hip arthroplasty or the posterior or posterior lateral total hip arthroplasty is by far the most commonly performed procedure in the United States for hip replacement. This traditionally involves placement of the patient on the lateral positioning on the table and the use of a large approximately 15 centimeter incision located over the lateral thigh centered over the greater trochanter. As part of the surgery, the muscle fibers of the gluteus maximus are split in order to gain access to the hip joint. Additionally, the traditional posterior hip replacement also involves release of several muscular structures off the posterior femur. These include the piriformis, the conjoint tendon, as well as the quadratus femoris. Once these muscles are released, there is easy access to the hip through the posterior hip capsule. By contrast, the direct anterior approach to the total hip arthroplasty is done with positioning in supine. The direct anterior approach is an intermuscular approach, meaning that muscles are neither split nor released from their attachments. As we can see in the illustration to the right, the superficial muscle intervals between the tensor fascia lata and the sartorius, both of these muscles are intact and are retracted to expose the second layer which is the gluteus medius and the rectus femoris. Once these muscles are retracted out of the way, again, direct access to the hip is available through the anterior hip capsule. There are multiple advantages of the direct anterior approach to total hip arthroplasty. One of the most commonly cited advantages is the resulting less soft tissue damage following the procedure. It has been well established that using a traditional total hip arthroplasty results in measurable damage to the gluteus medius and minimus in the overwhelming majority of cases. In addition to soft tissue damage, there is evidence of direct muscle damage following posterior hip arthroplasty, which is lessened with a direct anterior approach. This is a study looking at creatine kinase release immediately after surgery and for several days postoperatively. And we see that the direct anterior approach results in less creatine kinase um, elution following the procedure, indicative of less overall muscle mass following this procedure. In addition to muscle damage and soft tissue damage, there is also direct evidence that the direct anterior approach to total hip arthroplasty decreases global inflammation surrounding the hip joint after the procedure. 
This is a study looking at several inflammatory markers in the immediate perioperative period, including CRP, interleukin-6, interleukin-1-beta, and TNF-alpha. It is found that compared to the baseline value, post-operative procedures performed using a direct anterior approach resulted in, in decreased dilution of these uh, inflammatory markers. Another cited advantage of the direct anterior approach is faster recovery. Multiple randomized prospective trials have compared direct anterior approach to other approaches for total hip arthroplasty, and these have consistently demonstrated improvement at six weeks, six months, and one year following joint replacement. However, these previous uh, advantages tend to wash out over time, but from the surgeon's advantage, or from the surgeon's perspective, one of the most important advantages of the direct anterior approach is the increase in stability of the joint. And there are multiple reasons for the superiority of the direct anterior approach in terms of stability. In the supine positioning, the pelvis is in a very reproducible position. This allows easy guidance with the use of fluoroscopic uh, imaging during the procedure uh, to really hone in on appropriate cup and femoral component placement. Additionally, because of the supine positioning, computer navigation is, is trivial to use during the case and has been shown to be effective. The dislocation rate following standard traditional posterior lateral uh, total hip arthroplasty is approximately 6% in the first two years. Several studies have demonstrated a less than 1% risk of dislocation following a direct anterior approach. Another very important advantage from the surgeon's perspective is the decreased risk of component malpositioning. Again, because of the reproducible anatomic landmarks afforded by the supine positioning, as well as the optional fluoroscopic guidance during the procedure, there is very little uh, room for malpositioning of the components because these are placed under direct visualization in a consistent manner. A additional uh, significant advantage with the direct anterior approach is the ability for the surgeon to control and improve lead length discrepancies. Uh, this is twofold. The ability to use for fluoroscopy during the procedure allows us to accurately measure the intraarticular lead length discrepancy and make adjustments as necessary. Additionally, when a tableless technique is used, uh, we have the direct ability to palpate the bilateral malleoli to measure the overall lug lengths and again to make corrections as necessary. There are two common approaches to the direct anterior hip. Uh, by far the most common approach used in this country is with a specialized table or a fracture table, also called a traction table. Um, a less common approach using the same interval is uh, so-called tableless direct anterior approach. And there are several advantages with the use of a tableless direct anterior approach. Uh, some of the reported published advantages for the, on, for the uh, off table compared to the on table direct anterior includes uh, risk of less blood loss, decreased risk of femoral fracture, decreased risk of leg length discrepancy, and decreased operative time. However, there are multiple disadvantages with the use of the direct anterior uh, approach to the total hip arthroplasty procedure. Probably the most cited disadvantage of the surgery is that it's technically a more demanding procedure. And there have been several studies looking at the expectant learning curve, and this is estimated to be approximately 200 cases. Additionally, most direct anterior approach surgeons utilize the special equipment, including the traction table which adds significant cost, as well as logistic concerns with room preparation. And the direct anterior approach frequently requires the use of an additional assistant. I do have some relative contraindications for direct anterior approach. Because of concerns for wound healing complications, I do not believe that this is the best surgical approach for those in the morbid obesity classification. Uh, direct anterior approach can also be a challenge in surgery for instances of severe acetabular dysplasia, as well as uh, proximal thermal deformity, as is frequently seen following uh, trauma. So my individual practice, um, I was fellowship trained in direct anterior approach. Uh, my fellowship was called out of joint replacement in Denver. And this fellowship was among the top 5% in the nation in terms of, of volume of direct anterior approaches seen during fellowship. 
I do perform the direct and care approach off the table. And because of that, I do require specialized assistance. And that's uh, my PA, Natalie Hayes. Natalie is available for 100% of my surgeries and plays a very important role in life position. I'm one of approximately half a dozen surgeons in Iowa performing the table of direct anterior approach. Additionally, 100% of my cases, I've utilized computer navigation to confirm leg length discrepancy or to confirm leg leg equalization, to confirm uh, cup placement, femoral placement, as well as other parameters such as offset. I perform approximately 100 to 150 direct anterior hips per year, and my individual dislocation rate is zero. In addition to my clinical practice, I'm also very active in research. I have a PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Iowa, where I studied extensively computational biomechanics of total hips. I have over 20 first author biomechanical studies of so total hip arthroplasty is published, resulting in several national and international awards, including the Kappa Delta and the ORAF Clinical Research Award. I'm also co-director of the Iowa Orthopedic Biomechanics Research Laboratory. My clinical practice blends with my research interests, and as a part of that, I utilize novel preoperative and postoperative assessments for every patient that we consider for joint replacement. This includes bioanalysis, functional strength testing, and body composition, uh, during which I assess for muscle loss and uh, recovery after total arthroplasty. Uh, utilization of these modalities allows me to identify unique risk factors for complications and abilities to modulate those prior to surgery. Additionally, the University of Iowa has a very extensive clinical registry as well as a well-established system for collecting patient-reported outcome metrics. In brief, the University of Iowa is a 811-bed public hospital. It is Iowa's only comprehensive tertiary-level medical center, and the University of Iowa has long been nationally recognized in its role of leadership in the field of joint replacement. So with that, I appreciate your attention. This is my contact information. Please feel free to contact me with any questions or concerns. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Elkins, for joining us today. If you do have further questions and would like to speak with Dr. Elkins, please feel free to reach out to myself. I cover the Iowa City, Coralville, Cedar Rapids, Cedar Falls, Waterloo, and down to Ottumwa. Um, area and in Christian Smart covers Western Iowa, including Des Moines, Mason City, Ames. And then you can also contact us if you'd like to talk, if you are in the Quad City area or Dubuque or anywhere on the Eastern area of Iowa as well. So we thank you for joining us and have a great day.